Reggie here. This is journey number five. Of course, we're going journey through the Old Testament. And this lesson is entitled Noah, the preacher of righteousness. And so we are introduced to Noah here in Genesis chapter number six. Brother David does a good job of giving us an introduction to Noah. We find out that Noah received grace in the eyes of the Lord. His name uh, means rest. He was the engineer architect and the shipbuilder. He was the carpenter. He was a farmer. Um, he was the grandson of Methuselah, uh, of course, who was the oldest person in the Bible. And then we find out that God uses him really to start over because God sends a flood to destroy the earth. And that's what journey number five and journey number six is really about. Brother David does a great job with landmarks number one, two, and three, talking about Noah being the last man standing, even in a time where things didn't make sense. He stood for what God said. He knew that God wanted him to build this ark, even though it had never rained, and he stood. He was a preacher of righteousness. He was a blameless man, and he served the Lord, which also should challenge us. Will we stand for the Lord, even when it doesn't make sense, even when maybe there's opposition or people make fun of us or ridicule us. Landmark number two talks about Noah's faith and Noah's family. And Hebrews chapter number 11 and verse number seven is the great faith hall of fame in the New Testament. And of course, it states that by faith, Noah being warned of God, moved with fear, preparing this ark. God honors faith. He always has and he always will. We're saved by faith. We live by faith. We worship by faith. We serve by faith. Everything we do is about faith. We are people of faith. And faith also translates over to our family. And then, of course, landmark number three, Brother David makes mention that all have sinned. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're sinners by nature. We're sinners by practice. We're sinners by choice. And even Noah missed the mark. Um, after following God, building the ark, entering the ark, staying on the ark, he gets off the ark. And according to Genesis chapter number nine, he gets drunk and such a drunken stupor that he becomes naked. So I'm glad God puts the shortcomings and the downfalls of his people in the scripture too so that we may learn from them. Now, I went through all of those quickly um, because I want to call your attention to something that's important in Genesis chapter number six. Genesis chapter number six is part of a fall. You say, now wait a minute, Brother Reggie, that happened back in Genesis chapter number three. Well, that's what we view as Westerners. That's what we would say living in the Bible Belt in South Central Kentucky. But if we were Jews, we wouldn't look at the fall as just taking place in Genesis chapter number three with Adam and Eve in the garden and a tree and forbidden fruit and a snake. We would look at the fall to be more of a process. Genesis chapter number three, Adam and Eve disobeyed. They rebelled and they died immediately spiritually. Later on, they died physically. But then something else happens here in Genesis chapter number six. Something also happens in Genesis chapter number 11. And if we were looking through the um, eyes of a Israelite today, we would see the fall in Genesis 3, Genesis 6, and Genesis number 11. Today, Genesis 6 is what we're going to talk about a little bit. And I want to introduce you here uh, in Genesis chapter number six and verse number one to something that's so super important because not only will it help us understand why God would send a flood to wipe out his creation. Things had to be bad, right? Had to be more than just being uh, given in marriage and drinking and partying. Had to be something big for God to wipe out those people that he created. Well, Genesis six tells us that. Then also, it, it helps us to understand other obscure passages that Jude refers to, that Peter refers to. And many of you know exactly what I'm talking about. In Genesis chapter 6, number 4, we're introduced to this weird word. It's the word Nephilim. It refers to a fallen people um, that are hybrids that were created by fallen angels and earthly women. 
you said, Brother Reggie, what in the world? Well, let me read this to you. And this is important that we get the context of the interpretation of this correct. Genesis 6, verse 1, it says, When man began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them, the sons of God, well, that's not talking about earthly men. Anytime that phrase, sons of God, is used, you can find out that it's always in reference to angels. And I'm going to also... Um, add a video to the description where you can just uh, click the link on a wonderful in-depth teaching about this by Chuck Missler. I would encourage you to check that out as well because all I'm doing is introducing this topic to you. But these sons of God, these fallen angels saw that the daughters of men were attractive. So they looked upon these earthly ladies. They liked what they saw and they took as their wives any they chose. They just handpicked them, took them. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh, his days shall be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came in to the daughters of man, and they were bore, or excuse me, and they bore children to them, these were the mighty men who were of old the men of renown. The Lord saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him to his heart. And so we find out that God chooses Noah, Noah's wife, his three sons and their wives, and he saves them. Now, here's what's going on. The reason that he spares them is because they were probably the only purely human people that were in existence. Plus, they followed the Lord by faith. They trusted in him and his promises. So God shows grace or favor to Noah, spares him to start humanity over again. Why? Because probably everybody else were hybrids. They were these Nephilims or the Nephilites that was half man, half angelic being created by these fallen angels and these earthly ladies. Now, this seems odd to us as Westerners, but again, if we're reading the Torah, the first five books of the Bible as an Israelite, these are things that we've been taught from uh, ever since we were old enough to learn and to read and to, to talk. And so this is just part of the Jewish culture where we might think that this is fanciful or fable. This is actually biblical truth. This happened, and this is the reason that God flooded the earth. What's going on? Well, Satan tried to cause Cain to rise up and kill Abel because he thought Abel might be the promised deliverer from Genesis 3.15. Remember what God told Satan? Hey, the deliverer's coming and you'll bruise his head, but or excuse me, his heel, but he's going to crush your head. Well, guess what? It wasn't Abel. Now Satan thought, huh, here's what I'll do. I'm going to make humanity hybrid so the Messiah cannot come, the deliverer cannot come, and he almost succeeds except Noah. Thank God for Noah. God uses Noah basically to salvage humanity. And so you say, Brother Reggie, I have never heard this before. This is crazy. This is outlandish. I promise you this is biblical. Look it up in the original language. Be sure to check in the description and click on the link of the video that uh, we're going to show you by Chuck Missler. It's very detailed on this. If you want more information on this, shoot me questions. I love talking about this. Now, I will say if you begin to Google this or YouTube this, you can go down some crazy, crazy rabbit holes Fast, You can get into some outlandish stuff. And so we're not really interested in, in all the extras with this. We just want to understand the context. And guys, this is the context. Why did God wipe away his creation? Because Satan was doing a good job at polluting humanity to keep the Messiah from coming. But thank God for Noah. He was faithful. He stood strong. He stood obedient, even though he's imperfect, just like we need to stand today. We need to stand for truth. We need to stand in faith. And we need to stand trusting that the Lord Jesus Christ, our deliverer, our ark of safety, will get us through. God bless you guys. Genesis chapter six in journey number five.